you know, auto tune. I love auto tune. I've had every version since pretty much one. The coolest thing about Auto Tune Pro for me is that button. As soon as you press that button, you have the same vibe, same sound as Auto Tune 5. And a lot of people who I work with would not use. I've had to work in studios that I normally would not work in um, because they had Auto Tune 5. I don't need that anymore. I've got classic mode. So one of the cool things about um, Auto-Tune uh, Pro is it also comes with Auto Key, um, which is gonna actually give you the key of the song. So if you put this thing on your two track, um, if you're working for a two track or even a lead vocal, it's gonna give you the key. You're just gonna press this button and you're gonna send it to each one of your Auto-Tunes. And now all of my other instances of Auto-Tune Pro have the same key, which is pretty cool. One of the things that a lot of people, when I work in many different studios, you know, this is the way most people work. Um, they'll work in regular auto mode. But um, I'm gonna give you a little tip. Press that advance button. Um, so this has already set your key. So if, let's say the key is B minor, um, we're gonna take this, we're gonna move it to chromatic. Um, so the reason I do that is now when we set it to B minor, or that's major, when we set it to B minor, it's already set to B minor. When you look at this, it's already giving you all the notes. So let's say a singer drifts on a riff and it's still amazing, but it's not actually in the key. It's very easy, let's say it was this note, I just hit it and it's, now it's not gonna track that note. So it's much easier to do those things from here. If you set it to minor, and I do this in many studios, I go, um, a lot of the engineers and assistants that I work with, they'll automatically set it to that other setting. And that's much more restrictive. For me, I'd rather see it like this because I can change that in two seconds. If somebody is singing a note that's tracking, that is still a good note, but the key is not recognizing it as part of a key, which is most black music, um, I can just remove that and it makes it very easy. With every artist that I work with, um, when I'm using Autotune, I'm gonna choose the right Bluetooth speed. Now, you also kinda have to understand something about um, where a vocalist lies in, in this section. If you're gonna have a female artist who's singing soprano part um, and you're gonna put her on the low male, that's not gonna work. If you're gonna have a low male, and it, when you open it up, it's gonna be in soprano. Um, you're gonna have to figure out what, what, she's, what range she's actually supposed to be in. So you're gonna have to know something. Um, but I would first hit this classic button then I would start playing with this retune speed till you, till you get where you want. Um, I don't normally use the exact same settings for leads and backgrounds. A lot of a lot of times I'll have pads that are doing um, other things than the lead, and I, the I normally want that lead to probably be a little tighter than what my backgrounds are. Now here's one one tip: is that you know when you're doing doubles. If you make that retune speed exactly what the other one is, and the singer's actually a really good singer, um, it's not really gonna give you the same effect as a real double, because it's gonna sound too close to the original. If you set that speed a little different, you're gonna kind of create a better double than if it's the exact same speed. Usually I'm doing four tracks per part. Um, if I'm doing two, it's just gonna be straight right, right, left. If I'm doing three, it's gonna be straight right, straight left. And the first one's probably gonna be somewhere in seven. It's gonna be somewhere in the center, but it's not gonna be straight in the center where that lead is. So, you know, if, if this were one of them, it's probably gonna go, you know, say, say put her to eight. I've always loved doing fours just because it's it's thick but it's not too thick 
and you because it's even you can kind of still if you want to do something that's a little unorthodox and put it in the center you can still put it in the center but you've got an extra one to play with okay so this would be what a normal session um, this is actually a normal small session for me um, two leads maybe three leads uh, in this case I have one main lead and one kind of ad-lib track. Um, if we undo this and let's hear what's going on under it. So those are the backgrounds. And that's pretty much what it looks like. And if you listen to the backgrounds, you'll understand if you listen to it, it's not perfectly in tune. The whole thing to try and show you that if you listen to the backs, the backs aren't as in tune as the lead, but that's because that's the way I want it. It's gonna sound thicker. <laughs> 